Good morning and welcome back to my channel. Um, so today I want to talk about a novella um, that I first mentioned in a review I did of a memoir. Um, and the memoir was With the Kisses of His Mouth by Monique Roffrey. And it was a memoir about the breakup of her relationship with a, another writer um, and the heartbreak that she experienced and also her sort of sexual awakening and sexual journey in her 40s following this breakup. Um, and I made a point of saying when I reviewed the, the memoir that though I thought it was quite a brave thing to write about women's sexuality um, and I think she was very brave to be so open, I felt that she treated the two things very separately. So the um, breakup of the relationship and her recovery from heartbreak and her sexual journey or adventure, she treated them as separate things. And I felt that actually um, they were related to each other because in her relationship there had been no sex for a number of years and her partner had been unfaithful to her sexually um, and then suddenly she embarks on this sexual adventure of tantric sex and going to swinging resorts so I felt that she hadn't really fully explored that and so I um, made a prediction that the novella she wrote um, five years later called The Tryst would bring those two parts together here's what I said so I think The Tryst potentially um, is the culmination of her experiences, the breakup, and the writing of the memoir and the sexual adventure that she was on, I get the sense that the tryst has probably brought all this together. And in some ways, potentially, I think the tryst I might find more interesting and enjoyable because I think the memoir was written very much like a stream of consciousness. Um, it was written in the moment. It was written without a necessarily a perspective, a, a stepping back. And I get the sense the tryst is the thing that's done that. So I am planning on um, um, reading The Tryst to see if my hunch is right that The Tryst actually does the thing that I didn't think the memoir did, which is to try and understand or explore um, the link between this dry and arid relationship and then this sudden, sudden sexual awakening. So just briefly, The Tryst is about a um, married couple in their 40s called Jane and Bill who are in a loving but sexless relationship. So immediately we can see this is very similar to um, Monique Roffrey's um, relationship with um, her partner. Um, and the novel opens with them going to the pub to meet a friend, to have a drink, um, and you can see that they're very comfortable with each other, they have a really nice life, um, but there's no sexual chemistry between them. When they're in the pub, a woman joins them who is described as extremely petite, very, very curvy, with lots of red curly hair and an extremely overt sexual presence. And she immediately begins to flirt with Bill and the other man and she also flirts with Jane. Jane, who's a little bit tipsy, decides that she'll invite Lila <coughs> back to their, ho their home because she kind of wants to spice things up a bit and I think she's kind of wanting to give Bill a treat because she knows that she's withholding sex from him. She's played constantly by sexual fantasy and dreams. So she's having lots of sex within her daydreaming and her fantasy life, but not with Bill. So you get the sense that Jane knows there's a problem and she knows the problem really originates from her. Um, and you also get the sense that maybe she wants to escape this relationship and meet men that she is attracted to. And I think that's partly what was happening in the memoir, I think. Partly Monique Ruffy almost wanted her partner to um, cheat on her so she could leave and find her sexuality. Um, but I also get the sense that she regrets that that happened. Anyway, so that's what the tryst's about. Um, <clears throat> basically, Lila is not real. Lila is a personification of the, the repressed sexual side of Jane, and therefore Monique Ruffy, the author. <clears throat> and she's also the personification of Lilith, who I didn't know anything about really until I read The Tryst, who um, was expelled from the Garden of Eden. She was um, Adam's first relationship before Eve because she refused to submit to Adam. She refused to lie beneath him. She wanted to be equal. So she was cast out. Um, and as a result of that, she became this kind of mythical, demonic type creature who preys on babies um, and is a sexual predator. And so... Lila in the novel, in, in the novella, is very much like Lilith, but there's also a bit of kind of, she's also like a bit of a woodland imp 
she has pointy teeth and pointy ears and there's often flashes of her as a kind of gnarly scrunched up woodland creature. Um, so Lila's not really real, she's really an expression of the frustration in the relationship. So, did the tryst do what I thought it would do? Yes, I think the tryst was Monique Ruffridge's way of finally putting together all of her experiences as I said and I think she was exploring why she didn't want sex in real life and yet she, her head was full of sexual fantasy. And I think from that perspective, the novella is really interesting and really important because I don't think women talk about this enough. I don't think women talk about the fact that they're brought up um, to, 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 well they're brought up to kind of have two selves. There's the outward self that is chaste and good and um, doesn't go about sleeping with lots of people um, and is a good wife and mother or, or partner. Um, and then there's this other side of being a woman, you know, the whore, the prostitute, the loose woman. And it's almost like they're two separate women. You, you're either the, the whore or you're the wife. And it's like you can't be both. And I think the tryst really explores the fact that when Jane and Bill were in a marriage and a relationship, it was almost like their relationship was too holy for Jane to be um, this sexual being. So Lila was this bit of herself that was hidden. So I think the novel, novel is, is really good at exploring that because I think lots of women struggle with this in intimate relationships, showing that side of themselves that actually they've been told is bad and not good and shouldn't, you know, um, nice women shouldn't show that side of themselves. And I think that's really difficult for women. So I think the tryst really does help to explore that. And I think from that perspective, it's an important piece of work. However, for me as a, as a story, it just didn't, it didn't work. And it didn't work for a number of reasons. <clears throat> it's told from three perspectives. So you have the voice of Lila, Jane and Bill going over the same scenes. Bill's voice I didn't really buy into because after reading the memoir, I kind of get the sense that Bill's voice is what Monique hoped Bill was thinking when he was in a relationship with her rather than what he was probably actually thinking. I'm not sure he would have been as thoughtful as she puts into his head. Um, and it's almost like Bill fights for Jane much harder than it sounds like happened in real life. Um, so Bill's voice I don't really get. Jane's voice is just a bit boring. The only voice I really enjoyed was Lila's voice because she's a bit wicked, um, but she's also funny and she's sexy, um, she's selfish, but also she's, I don't know, she's just, obviously she's a fascinating character because she's kind of not of this world. So I kind of wish it had all been told from Lila's perspective, but if it had have been, it would have been a very short book because it was only short anyway, because it only really covers a 48 hour period. So the other problem is I thought there was a lack of plot development. We didn't really get a sense of Jane and Bill before Lila. We didn't get a sense of Lila before that. I kind of, you know, felt it could have gone on further. We wanted, I wanted to see what Lila did next or where Lila had come from. Um, so for me, there was a, a lack of development. Um, I'm just looking at my notes so, so I can remember it. Um, I also think the tryst was basically an exercise in wish fulfillment because in the tryst, Lila gets in the way of Jane and Bill, just like in the real life relationship, um, he has an affair um, which gets between um, Monique and him and she leaves him because she gets very upset by finding out about the affair. Um, but in real life they never get back together again and he goes on and gets married. Um, but in the novel um, what happens is um, Jane fights for Bill, she goes back and basically physically fights Lila um, and Bill breaks up Lila's um, sculpture which is the hex spell that she's put on the couple to keep them apart and then Jane and Bill get back together again but this time they get back together with Jane being all parts of herself so they get back together and have a wonderful sexual relationship and live happily ever after. So the tryst was almost I think wish fulfillment on Monique's part which is what I think she kind of hoped or wished that she could have got back um, with um, her partner and that they could have had a fulfilling um, relationship and that didn't happen. So there's a lot of wish fulfillment going on. I also think it was very thinly disguised autobiography. Monique Ruffery said it wasn't but after you've read the memoir and then you read the tryst I mean you, you can see it's exactly the same relationship played out even to the point of where um, in the memoir she talks about each year on their anniversary she gave, she gave her partner um, an egg um, which she goes on to think about symbolises the fact that of her eggs and the fact she wasn't having children um, and in the novel 
the tryst, um, the eggs are very, very central. The eggs become part of the spell that Lila puts on them both. Um, so for me it didn't work as a book. I still think it's a relatively important um, piece of writing because I think we need to write about female sexuality much more and, and recognise that women are just the same as men, that we all have sexual desires and there's nothing wrong with having sexual desires uh, and feeling sexual and I think we need to really be much more open about that. So from that point of view it's good but in terms of out of stars I would probably give it no more than two stars. Um, I, I, I think there's potentially better um, erotic fiction out there. So I didn't, I didn't find it erotic, whereas I did find the memoir quite erotic. Um, I found the sex in it quite, um, I don't know, quite violent um, um, and combatant. So it didn't, it, it didn't um, fulfil any erotic um, side either. So it didn't really, really work for me. But I'm really glad I've read it and the memoir. And I think what Monique Ruffey is trying to do is be much more open about sex and sexuality, and I think her story is the same story as many, many women in relationships, and that's where I think it's important. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.